Ahead of the 2023 presidential elections, presidential candidates face hard choices to choose their running mates. So look at this on the program this morning. Also on the breakfast, groups including the Christian Association of Nigeria and Catholic Society of Nigeria have won political parties against filing a Muslim Muslim ticket in the 2023 presidential elections. We also have uh, new super analysis on off the press. Very good morning to you. Welcome to the program right here on Plus TV Africa. The breakfast is what we call it. My name is Kofi Bartels. And I am Mr. Boko. Beautiful morning to you. All right, uh, we have uh, interesting conversations for you lined up as we earlier advertised. And of course, uh, we usually would start up uh, with a trending segment on the program. It was a, a sort of um, a chase last night on, on Twitter uh, to try and find out the location and the whereabouts of a young woman who had raised the alarm uh, that she had been kidnapped. And uh, Twitter was, um, I won't say agog, but quite busy uh, because at the time people were trying to inform the police and the authorities that uh, a young woman had been kidnapped. She put up the information and uh, uh, shared it on Twitter. So people were given some sort of a live location to try and get where she is so that they could um, at least uh, get the authorities to, to find her. Um, you know, it was, it was quite a, um, a sight to behold. Indeed, uh, the authorities had to put out something. But her name is Amira Sufian. And this is the tweet she put out. Please, whosoever has my WhatsApp number, I sent a broadcast message. Uh, I sent a broadcast message of my location. We were abducted at gunpoint by people with uniforms, police uniforms, and a van uh, from our house or houses from different parts of Abuja. We're 17, including three pregnant women and two little kids. They didn't see uh, my phone. All right, and um, it was all over Twitter. People were, you know, trying to get her location, her friends and all that, put it out. And uh, not long after that, the uh, FCT police command, they are on Twitter. They replied to her tweet that investigation is in progress. We thank everyone for the many helpful information. They put it coming from all quarters and urge all to exercise calm and patience as we get to the root of this. Uh, kindly check your DM, Amira Sufian. This is what the uh, the police said. Kindly check your DM. Good mercy. Mm. First, it's um, very um, commendable of Nigerians. I mean, the fact that everyone should concern uh, trying to come to the aid of the young lady and every other person, according to the information. And uh, as much as we would say that social media has its ills, it also has, uh, you know, its uh, importance. Well, it's also very saddening that we have to talk about this every other time, uh, the issue of kidnapping. And we constantly ask ourselves, do we have a government? That's the question. What is the responsibility of a government in any, any, any civil crime? Uh, among other issues. Now, the, the, the fact that, you know, uh, among some of the issues that were raised is that uh, these kidnappers were confidently telling their victims of how they will be transported from one point to the other. Uh, it brings us back to the question of on our roads, we ought to have, um, you know, security checkpoint. I mean, all of that confidence, all of that, um, you know, effrontery. I mean, whatever word you want to use to describe that, it's, it calls for a lot of concern. But as much as we would say that security is, uh, you know, government's responsibility, it's also important that uh, we stay very alert and we are very vigilant in the course of our uh, transaction and going about our businesses because it feels like we're living in, doesn't feel like we do, are really living in a very difficult time as a people. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. As a matter of fact, um, uh, it's also a concern that um, this is happening in the FCT. Uh, you know, people have raised that concern as well that this is happening in the federal capital territory, and that uh, uh, if you're having location uh, uh, kidnapping locations in the FCT within Abuja, it's it causes a concern. Is this 
one of those kidnappings that you have uh, with banditry, you know, is it terrorism? Or is it a regular, you know, it's no more kidnap for ransom by, by people who are not terrorists? We don't know. Uh, but, um, I mean, people are also um, concerned that the uh, authorities could not, you know, give a, a better response than telling her to check her DM. I mean, how does that sound? You're telling the victim to check their DM is not, uh, you know, an encouraging sign from the police. <laughs> um, but um, it's... it's, it's uh, it's, it's, it's good that at least the lady was able to put a, a message across and tweet holding her phone. But some people are also doubting the, the whole story. You know, asking, you know, from the tweet, how you were able to tell us that you were kidnapped from various locations? Why can't you mention where you were picked from? You know, so what some people are saying. You didn't tell us exactly where you picked from, but you're telling us that you picked from different locations. And uh, people are doubting the tweet saying, hey, you should have at least given us the exact location where you picked from so that we can we can at least know. You know, he said we picked from different locations. It uh, sounds fishy. No, but, 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 yeah, that's what some people are saying. Yeah. I, I really, but I, I also don't know if we also remember uh, the incident that happened, the Abuja, Abuja uh, train kidnap or attack that happened where uh, someone had also tweeted at the time that she was dying. And there was also a response on Twitter. I mean, Twitter can be just be a place where you have different kind of energy mm. uh, all around. And so someone was like, when are you dying at a time? <laughs> because most times we don't understand. Now, you don't want to be in a situation where you are in danger. You can't really tell. Uh, sometimes you find people and you ask them, why didn't you do X, Y, Z at a time? It is not a time where there's a lot of logic or reasoning because uh, at some point, you know, the, the medical practitioners would say that your body would be responding differently. You would just have a lot of hormones being secreted into your system uh, because of the situation that you're faced with. And so you don't expect someone who is facing danger, whose life, you know, uh, is under threat to begin to act very rational and be very detailed. Uh, that is really a lot of bravery to even tweet. So I, I think that, you know, that, that, that might just be a lot because if you've never faced, if you've never been in a situation uh, where your life is under threat, then I'm, I'm not sure you would understand what it is. You don't expect that time to begin to say, oh, you know exactly and you're very detailed about the situation. So uh, I understand that for for some reason, a lot of people have used you know the social media platform as a means of you know causing or generating attracting attention to themselves. But it might not also also be in some cases. I think it's important that we call some of this person's uh, slack and see if it's a situation because people have found out that Twitter and social media has helped a lot. And so, if you have your phone and you think you're in danger, that one of the things you would do is just to put it out there, just in case someone can stumble and help can come. So yes, that's it. And on the, moving away from that, another on the top trending list is the fact that according to statistics, 42% of uh, Nigerian or young people are unemployed. And it's something we talk about every other time. I really don't know how true this data is because it's also another thing. Yes. Uh, what census was conducted? You, you're on. doubting the data. I'm not <laughs> doubting the data. I'm not, but I'm Typical saying. Typical African woman. No, yeah. I'm not doubting the data. I'm just data. saying that it's possible that it can be more if you look at it, if you were talking about 42% and all of that. But before you arrive at all of these statistics, you were seeing it fully employed 37%, underemployed 21%, and uh, unemployed 42%. So we're looking at 100 percent that's not a pass mark if you were a lecturer you would not say that's good but i'm thinking that this 42 percent might just be a little bit above well it's very saddening that uh, we have to talk about this especially in the a country of us where i mean there's a lot that's going on or we have what it takes and so you find out that unemployment seem to be topping the chart because that 42 percent it's not a good thing at all to recon with. And how do you now uh, describe, you know, the rate of crime and criminality? It's, uh, there's a correlation according to those who would be speaking. Mm. Um, it's quite a, an interesting one. Uh, the, the Twitter handle of the company, StatiSense, put out this, uh, this, this piece of information. Um, uh, it's, it's raised some concern because... Um, 
it is data from the year 2020 that they, they put out because they were asked by some uh, 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 people on their Twitter handle, uh, what is the source of your information? And then they said uh, that people should check the 2020, uh, I don't know if it's a mistake, but labor force uh, reports, uh, labor force statistics report 2020 is the reply they gave to a young um, a person, or I don't know, someone, I don't know the age, because we assume everybody is using Twitter as young. <laughs> Uh, by the name I.B. Kenny, I.B. Kenny asked StatiSense, what's the source? And StatiSense, uh, that Twitter account, put out the information, said it's uh, the National Bureau of Statistics, uh, Labor Force Statistics Report 2020. Um, so, so people started, some said, you know what? Um, some are asking, hey, if this is from 2020, could it be worse or better by now? Why don't you give us a fresh... Uh, report, but they, they they put out state by state. I mean, it's not uh, a news story or news that um, uh, you know unemployment is a problem in the country, um, and uh, of course, whoever is coming in as president will have to to grapple with this issue of unemployment. It's not just a, a national issue. You go across states, it differs, you know, uh, state by state. It's not the same in Lagos as it is in maybe uh, River State, and. Um, I think it shows that it's not just the job of the the uh, the president to to solve issues of unemployment. The fact that they also reminded us of the state by state uh, statistic. You know, some states have over 50 percent unemployment rate. Their national average, you see, you saw there's forty two percent, but some states have fifty percent, fifty one percent, fifty five percent. So it shows that the state governments also have a, a role to play uh, in ensuring that uh, unemployment is nipping the bud. It's not just a federal issue and um, uh, citizens need to also hold their governors to account, mm. you know, for issues like this. And these are the questions that Nigerians should ask when, yeah, when you, people come to say, vote for me, make a job president, you mm. understand? What are you going to do about unemployment? We see it happen in American elections. Where people are asked what they will do when they become president of the United States. They, 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 you know, they are judged, their approval ratings rise and fall on, on the employment statistics, you know, employment, unemployment data, unemployment data. But we don't ask these questions. So, we don't, so, we don't so, take it uh, important. Important. So, so I think that it's, it's generic, you know. Um, however, it is that uh, we want to look at it and however it is that government would want to say, hey, yes, we know that the statistics vary, like you have um, put it out there. It varies from, you know, the, the various states that we have. Well, it's a generic thing. It's just basic that... Um, there are certain things that government need to do. These theories have been propounded a long time. And if you look at some of the developed climates that we have, or some of the countries that we're all always in temptation to compare ourselves with, as you find out that these countries have been running and been pushing this particular uh, you know, theory, that it is government's responsibility to provide the basic. In some climates, you find out that the private sector drives every sector the educational sector, the medical sector. And that can happen if the, you know, the environment, the ease of doing business is nothing to write home about. You have to look at the environment, how friendly is it? We're talking in terms of security because it would discourage, it should, you know, the level of security would attract, you know, uh, foreign investors and local, you know, investors. Who wants to chunk in their money? Who's, who's who, I mean, what investor would want to come in and invest in an economy where, or in a country where security is a major issue? So that's on the one hand. So I think before we begin to say, yes, it is, uh, um, you know, the responsibility of individuals as much as government, uh, government needs to take care of the primary thing of ensuring that, you know, they provide an enabling environment so that the private sector can actually thrive. You also need to begin to look at the taxes as well. There are some states where, because they haven't been able to think outside of the box, and then you find out that taxes become, you know, top on the, on, 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 the, on the front burner. So they begin to tax the people. Who are you taxing? I mean, you're taxing the same civil servant. What is the, uh, you know, uh, the, power, the purchasing power in the state and all of that? But so, so it still brings up back to issue that even if we have, you know, um, 
the 42 percent as the entire and then other state it varies it, it just shows you that there's a lot of problems some states will begin to argue that oh we don't have i mean the, the level of sufficiency we're unable to begin to generate revenue it brings us back to the system of uh, government that we're operating some people say let's get back to you know a uh, true federal system where we're able to um, harness the resources that we have and control our resources so that we can we're able to do X, Y, Z. So it's a lot. It's a generic situation. And I'm hoping that, you know, government at different levels would understand the basic of government or the reason why government actually exists. All right. All right. Um, I mean, I've been scouring the NBS website uh, and accounts that I haven't seen much. I do hope that uh, with the National Bureau of Statistics uh, that uh, the fact that they have um, a new man at the helm of affairs, Amy Kali, would not mean that the work Sorry, Yemi Adinero would not mean that the work that the other man who was there did is, is going to stop. Because the guy who was there before, now at the National Bureau of Statistics, did a, a yeoman's job. Uh, he did a great job, you know, because uh, they're putting out statistics every now and then. We hope that the NBS will continue to be as vibrant as it was, even more vibrant, under the new, the new head of uh, the, uh, the organization. We don't want to be seeing news and pictures on, the, on their... Twitter accounts. I've been looking at it, trying to see whether that um, uh, information by StatiSense is, is recent. And, and, and what I see on the MBS is news. You know, I see news on their, on their page. We don't want news. And National Bureau of Statistics, please give Nigerians data. Data. We don't want to see pictures of your meetings uh, around the world. We don't want that. Give us data. Do your work. You know, don't give us news. Give us stats. You were doing a lot before now. I do hope that MBS is still doing more. And I've seen some interesting stats, but I'm not keen about the news they put up on their, on their Twitter account, you know, the, the head of the organization going for conferences and stuff. That's not what we want. Please give us stats, more stats. You've been doing a great job. Please continue and even do more. And let's believe that with the new man at the helm of affairs that uh, is not so new anymore, of the MBS National Bureau of Statistics, that um, we will see better from the organization but i'm noticing a difference which is i'm seeing more of news the the, the head went for a pro conference he had a courtesy call from you know, snap pictures and put there we want data more of that than, than those things let's move on um so some of the hazards of 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 the trade you know business you you hope that you hope to get continuity in government governance someone comes in as governor does a good job the next person that comes in should continue someone is head of a, a ministry department agency leaves the person comes and she continue yes yeah, so let's hope that that's that's what we see with the mbs i sincerely hope sincerely hope you've done a lot of good work in the past um, abba Carey has been in the news um and of course uh he's always a, a fertile you know ground for people to comment on you know it's been a an interesting story um the federal high court sitting in abuja uh, yesterday sentenced uh, two drug traffickers connected to him uh, uh chibuna patrick and uh, Emeka Ezinwane, who were linked uh, to the suspected, uh, suspended rather, Deputy Commissioner of Police, Abba Kerry, uh, they backed six years, mercy, uh, imprisonment, six whole good years. I think you remember the video, I remember the, uh, the, um, the secret recording done by NDLEA, and then the story that came out, and the police response, and the press conference they called, and the NDLA, NDLA had to respond to them as well. You know, um, so the, the, the trial judge, Justice Emeka Nite, convicted the two gentlemen of on counts five, six, and seven of the NDLEA uh, charges, or charge preferred against them. So I think remember that two of them were arrested at Akanoibia International Airport in Enugu while attempting to smuggle cocaine into the country. Uh, and they were arraigned on on March 7 before that court, alongside DCP Amber Carey, and also, importantly, four other police officers um, who were handed over by the police to uh, NDLA. ACP Sunday Ubia, Inspector Simon Agirigba, uh, K, uh, Inspector John Nuhu, and ASP Bawa James. Let's see what happens uh, at the end of the day. But it's important to note that both Umebe and uh, Ezewane had upon the arraignment pleaded guilty uh, to the drug trafficking charge against them. I mean, everyone is saying that uh, this should actually, this particular case should serve as a deterrent to uh, those who are in this kind of practice. I'm sure that you probably would have 
um, other persons who are involved and are indulging. And so um, Nigerians are asking that this should actually serve as a deterrent. They're also hoping that Abakari gets a sentence as well. And uh, everyone involved, you know, um, gets it just to send a message. Well, I don't know, we can't continue like this. It's quite unfortunate, if you ask me. Once upon a time, a superhero, you know, a star, all of a sudden, um, this is what's going on. Well, I think that's the much we can take at this point in time on our top trending conversation. We'll take a break now. When we return, we'll be looking at the front pages of the national dailies. Please stay with us.